A very good evening to you and welcome to KTN Prime. My name is Sophia Wanuna. Many thanks for joining us on this uh, 23rd day of May 2017. Exactly 76 days to the August 8th general election. I'm Ben Kitili. KTN Prime begins right now. It begins right now and you have a look at the highlights. We have no intention of acting contrary to the law. Clearly, IEBC has set up a trap to rule out and to cancel out independent candidates in Kenya. Roadblocks to the presidency. The fine print in the election law causes jitters among independent candidates. We struggle to comprehend the warped and twisted mind that sees a room packed with young children not as a scene to cherish, but as an opportunity for carnage. World reeling in shock after terror attack leaves 22 dead in UK's Manchester city. We bought this land for 800 shillings. Don't joke with us. Showdown of Akisumu exhumation. What we realized in the construction of a bus is that buses were being constructed without the proper steer. And manufacturers and builders now require to ensure the PSV does not kill you during a crash. Our sign language interpreter tonight is Marisha Owiti. Now, Kenya's Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission today uh, warned that presidential aspirants who fail to abide by the Election Act will be edged out of the polls amid protests by some of the aspirants. The IBC gave the warning as it held a consultative meeting with all presidential aspirants who will be on the ballot on the August, of, on the August 8th as per the election requirements. Our Timothy Otiano begins our broadcast tonight. Just a day after the deadline for submission of signatures required to vie for Kenya's presidency, the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission was engaging the 20 men and women who wish to lead this nation in a forum to iron out any arising issues. And if the day's session is anything to go by, then the thorn in the flesh for the aspirants and the commission could be the requirements to gather at least 2,000 signatures for the presidential aspirants. The law requires that any person seeking to vie for the highest office in the land ought to obtain at least 2,000 signatures from at least 24 out of the 47 counties in Kenya. But it is Section 29.2 of the 2012 Election Act requiring independent candidates to ensure their signatures emanate from persons not registered in any political party that is causing jitters among the 12 independent presidential candidates. Clearly, IEBC has set up a trap to rule out and to cancel out independent candidates in Canada. That the Constitution is very clear, Article 137 and the others, that you need 2,000 voters to sign for you in majority of counties, not independent voters. It is voters. Never undermine a potential leader. Never. Don't judge. Last time, we went through all the tedious programs that you people have listed. 2,000 signatures. You must be from your party. If somebody from Jubilee admires my idea and he's registered with the Jubilee, he can support me, pre my presidential bid. If somebody from ODM, who before going for ODM did not see me and has realized that I'm there and my ideas can be sold and buys my idea, is it wrong? Is it a sin? Is it a crime? The commission was, however, quick to defend its action, insisting that the law had outlined the needed requirements and disgruntled individuals should seek redress at the courts. We swore to abide by the law, the constitution and the law of the land. And we have no intention 
of acting contrary to the law. Aside from the signatures, presidential aspirants must be Kenyan citizens by birth. Both the aspirant and their running mate must be university degree holders from an institution recognized by the Commission for University Education. Aspirants must be cleared by the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission and obtain a certificate of good conduct. And in the case of independent candidates, they must have a symbol the IEBC shall use on the ballot paper. If I were in your shoes, I would actually sort out these things out of court. These are the things, because I'm told there are some things that are administrative. And you know them, and you know I know them. And there are things that are legal. So, because we want a very good election, very quickly, why don't you just sit with these difficult people, who are not very difficult people, Resolve them, then we can move, Mr. Chairman. That's what I suggest. If the Commission decides to make unilateral decisions in this regard of the law, then we are headed for a state of anarchy. And I think if the court pronounces itself on these provisions, we shall, uh, we shall see what the court says and, 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 and apply it accordingly. The Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission held similar meetings with aspirants across 290 constituencies in 47 counties as it prepares for an election with the highest number of participants in Kenya's history. Timothy Otieno, KTN News. So what will happen to the offices of majority and minority leaders in parliament and county assemblies if more independent candidates are elected than those sponsored by political parties. Well, this is what legal thinkers are grappling with as close to 4,000 independent candidates prepare to contest in the August 8th polls. And as our political affairs reporter Muremi Mwanginao tells us, a sitting MP has said he will introduce a bill in Parliament to revive party hopping to contain the rising number of independent candidates. As many as the country opinions say, nay. The eyes of it. It was a historic decision preceded by fierce backroom lobbying and intense horse trading. The September 1st National Assembly vote that effectively killed the party hopping culture. But now, close to 4,000 aspirants are seeking election on the only other option left after the party primaries running as independent candidates. In future, we'll even create space, like in other jurisdictions, where you see independent candidates having their own space to sit in, the, in, the, in our parliaments. Uh, the, what they call a U-shaped parliament means that on one side you have the opposition, and the other side you have government. And at the U-shape, you then have independent candidates. But with only 77 days to the August 8th elections, a bigger headache has emerged over the fate of key parliamentary and county assembly offices. Should a majority of the elected legislators turn out to emerge from this group of independent candidates? Article 108 of the 2010 Constitution directs that the office of the majority leader in the National Assembly and the Senate should be occupied by the leader of the party or coalition with a majority of members in the House, while the office of the minority leader in either of the two houses is to be occupied by the leader of the second largest party in the respective House. Independent members have to find a way of uh, orienting their legislative activities either through the majority party in parliament or through the minority party. We will discuss the, 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 how do we relate to independence when the elections are over and we see their numbers. While most observers argue that drafters of the 2010 constitution overlooked the potential of independent candidates in shifting the Kenyan political compass. Bring these guys <laughs> Constitutional lawyer Bobby Mkangi, a former member of the Committee of Experts that drafted the document, argues the bias majorly towards party system is justifiable. We anticipate them to have their independent agenda in the House. So why an independent member would want to come and uh, become the leader of one of the formations, not only the majority but also minority, um, would be questioned. 
But in a fresh twist, Sabatia legislator Alfred Agoy is planning to table in parliament a bill to reintroduce party hopping. Na today da hii amendment tunaweza kufanya hata kutuingia bunge tupatie hawa watu walikuwa wameingia independent candidates candidates an opportunity ya kuingia kwa chama ina watu wanataka waingie one opportunity alafu tuendelee mbele namna hiyo. Elections zingine ikija hakuna haja kwenda kwa chama. Watu watasimama kama independent candidates. With the top political players already jostling for numbers in parliament and across the county assemblies, independent candidates, it appears, face an enormous task, dislodging political parties from their traditional hold on the numbers. Muremi Mwangi, KTN News, in Nairobi. Thank you, Muremi. So that's one of the questions or the issues that uh, pundits are grappling with. What will be happening in the National Assembly, the Senate and the county assemblies if more independent candidates are elected into office. That is the basis of our big question discussion tonight. We are asking you, do you agree with that uh, member of parliament? Should Kenya go back to unrestricted party hopping? Tell us what you think. Text your no, yes or no opinion. All right. Text us double two one double five or you can tweet at Ben underscore Kitili at uh, Sophia Wanuna or at KTN News. So a big international story now, and at least 22 people were killed and 59 others injured in a suicide bomb attack in the Manchester Arena in Manchester, England. The attack occurred as hundreds left a concert by popular U.S. singer Ariana Grande. Islamic terror group ISIS has claimed responsibility for that attack. It was meant to be an evening of fun, as hundreds attended a concert by Ariana Grande, a 23-year-old American singer at the Manchester Arena, Europe's largest indoor arena with a capacity of 22,000 people. But the evening ended in horror. As Ariana Grande's fans left the concert at around 10.30 p.m. Monday night, a lone attacker detonated an improvised explosive device packed with nuts and bolts near the concert hall, leaving everyone scampering for safety. So we started walking down to the other set and that's when we heard an explosion. So I was like, we need to run. So we started running. We ran straight out the doors, all the way down to the hotel. And all I could hear was screaming, people crying. Everyone was just running everywhere. It was completely madness. In the aftermath, 22 people, including an eight-year-old girl, were killed, and at least 59 were injured, many of them suffering from shrapnel injuries. One person was arrested, and police say they know the identity of the bomber who died at the scene. We are working closely with National Counterterrorism Policing Network and UK intelligence partners. This is clearly a very concerning time for everyone. We're doing all that we can working with local and national agencies to support those affected. Following the attacks, British Prime Minister Theresa May chaired an emergency meeting of the government's crisis committee. We struggle to comprehend the warped and twisted mind that sees a room packed with young children not as a scene to cherish, but as an opportunity for carnage but we can continue to resolve to thwart such attacks in future, to take on and defeat the ideology that often fuels this violence, and if there turn out to be others responsible for this attack, to seek them out and bring them to justice. U.S. President Donald Trump, who spoke in Bethlehem during a joint press conference with Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas, described those behind the attacks as evil losers. So many young, beautiful, innocent people living and enjoying their lives murdered by evil losers in life. I won't call them monsters because they would like that term. They would think that's a great name. I will call them from now on losers because that's what they are, they're losers. Ariana Grande, who was led to safety, said on her Twitter handle, broken from the bottom of my heart, I'm so, so sorry, I don't have words. 
The attack came less than three weeks before Britain's general election on the 8th of June. All parties have suspended their campaigns. ISIS has claimed responsibility for the attack, which is the most deadly attack on British soil in a decade since the 2005 London attack, which left 56 people dead. Rita Tinina, KTN News. And from the outside story now, there was a showdown in Kisumu's Korando village today as residents tried to stop the exhumation of a body. The deceased is said to have sold a piece of land for only 800 Kenya shillings, but when he passed away, his family buried him in the land he sold. The buyer, however, was having none of it and turned up today with police to exhume the body. Rashid Ronald has the drama from the county of Kisumu. Residents of Korando village up in arms against the police officers who had been sent to exhume the body of one of their own. Vowed to repossess the one acre piece of land after it emerged that the buyer could have paid in excess of 800 shillings to obtain it. But as this was going on, hired youths were busy exhuming the body. Ogada Uko, the nephew to the land seller, was at the center of the controversy, even in his absence. Oko's uncle was said to have sold the land in 1986 and that the deceased was said to have been part of the transaction. <laughs> Members of his clan attempted to bury him in the same land since his family had no alternative ground. They were, however, blocked by a court order. Gibson Onunga had claimed that he was the owner of the parcel which was transferred to him by his father who bought it from Oko's father. However, in April this year, Oko's family claimed to have won the case, prompting them to arrange for the burial of their kin. Two months after the burial, today Onunga raided the home with a contingent of police officers. I equally don't like what is happening now. I don't like it. If you look behind, there's a house that I've been, uh, I was constructing since 2014. I have spent three million shillings on that house. It is now derelict. I cannot complete it. Not because anybody stopped me, but because I thought if since we were in court, I should also hold my peace. So I really don't like what is happening, but uh, I, I really don't have an alternative. Police say they were acting according to the law. Rashid Ronald, KTA News, in the county of Kisumu. Let's now go to the new developments in the case in Wasingishu, where three children of Kapsoya Ward MCA aspirant James Ratemo were killed. The prosecution has asked for 10 more days to finalize investigations and place charges against the key suspect. <laughs> Let's now link up with our Elvis Kosge from Eldoret. Elvis, good evening. What more can you tell us about this case? Good evening. The Eldoret Law Court was today supposed to give an initial report of the initial charges that were placed against Enoch Onsanse, the younger brother of James Ratemo, an aspirant of Kapsoya Ward. But what had happened today in the Eldoret Law Court, the prosecutor, Charles uh, Zachary Omwenga, uh, requested to be added 10 more days because he said the man of which the case is turning has turned into something else. According to Omwenga, the change of circumstances prompted him uh, to request the chief magistrates Charles Obulutsa to amend the charges into murder. So these are some of the things that we are also expecting. Also of great interest is that the Office of Director of Criminal Investigations have already dispatched a special team of experts and investigators from the homicide department to work hand in hand with Eldoret officers to unravel this mystery. Of also of great concern, Endo Consanse who appeared before the Eldoret local today 
appeared composed. Uh, of course, we can see that uh, he had put on a heavy uh, gray jacket and also a gray trouser. And he was wondering why he was being arraigned in court. But he was later explained what has been happening. Also of great concern is that the family spokesman, who is Charles Jamwea, also wanted the police to expedite the investigations because he said that the phone that belongs to Eno Consanse has not yet been analyzed. Right, Elvis, and what evidence has been gathered that has led to the brother being highlighted as the key suspect? So far, according to the prosecutor, Zachary Omwenga, we only have two witnesses. One is a minor by the name John, and another one is an adult who saw Eno Consanse accompanying those children at Mozop area. This is around a few meters from Eldoret town. But that what they are working now is to use the phone of Eno Consanse to unravel, uh, because they are saying that the suspect could have worked with one or more two people uh, in connection with this murder. Remember, Clifford, Tani, and Glenn were found murdered at, uh, and their bodies were retrieved in Rivanzoia. This is Moise Bridge area, around 50 kilometers away from Eldoret town. All right, many thanks, Elvis Kosgei, live for us there from Eldoret. Right, you're watching KTN Prime here on KTN News. We thank you so much for staying with us. A quick reminder of our big question tonight. Should Kenya go back to unrestricted political party hopping? Indeed, tell us what you think about this. A, lo a high number of independent candidates. What would happen if uh, there are more independent members of the county assembly and the national assembly and the senate? Uh, that is what we're asking you. Tell us what you think. Text your yes or no opinion to our studio line, 122155. You can tweet us at Sophia Wanuna at Ben underscore Kitili. The hashtag to use on this online conversation is KTN Prime. We're taking a break, but when we return, we'll be telling you about new PS.